Welcome everyone to Microsoft OneNote for Beginners. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm really excited to have you on today's webinar. My name is Becky Wiegand and I'll be your host for today. So before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk. This is the platform we are on today. And you can talk to us anytime throughout the webinar by using the box on the lower left side of your screen. Let us know if you are having any problems with the audio or if the slides and the audio fall out of sync, anything like that. And also this is where you will let us know if you have questions for our presenters. Feel free to chat them out at any time and we will keep them queued up for Q&A. We will keep all lines muted for the webinar so we can get a nice clear recording of today's presentation that you can refer to again later and share with your friends and colleagues. Most of you will hear the audio play through your computer speakers. So if you are hearing an echo, it may mean that you are logged in more than once and will need to close any additional instances of ReadyTalk. If at any time your audio uh, is sketchy through the streaming audio or if it falls out of sync with the slides, we recommend that you dial in to the toll-free alternate phone number that is available in the chat window. You can use Skype or phone to call into that and use that access code to join us with uh, a landline audio that may be clearer. If you lose your Internet connection, reconnect using the confirmation or reminder emails that you would have received when you registered. If you were registered more than an hour ago, uh, the reminder sent an hour ago had today's PowerPoint slides attached on the right side where you can download those if you want to follow along. But keep in mind that today we will be doing live screen sharing as well. So those slides may be a representation of what we'll cover, but they won't actually show live on screen the demo that we'll do in OneNote. So keep that in mind and stay with us for the whole thing if you can. We are recording today's event so that you can find it on our website at TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. This is also where you can find upcoming events and other uh, archives of our webinars. So feel free to watch those at your convenience. We also will post this to our YouTube channel at TechSoup Video, and the slides will go up on SlideShare later today. Within a few days you will get an email with the full presentation, the recording that you can watch at your convenience, and any links that we discussed within a few days. If you'd like to tweet with us, you can do so at TechSoup or using the hashtag TSWebinars. As mentioned earlier, my name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. And I'm really glad to be your host for today's event. Uh, not only am I looking forward to this because I think it's an event that will uh, be useful to a lot of our users, but I'm actually really personally excited to learn more about OneNote too because I feel like this is a, a great tool that I haven't been able to make full access of yet either. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from our two experts on the line today. And the first is Rosette. She's our – actually this should say Strategic Communications Director. I apologize there's a typo on there. And she is our uh, Strategic Communications Director here at TechSoup. She manages all things related to communications from messaging, branding, thought leadership, and much more. Uh, she's also managed large and complex projects for 18 years and is a big fan of products like OneNote to help organize her information. And she's actually taught on this topic in-house here at TechSoup to help us learn more about it. So I'm really glad to have her helping teach you this topic today. Our second presenter is Wes White. He's a program manager here at TechSoup who uses OneNote to manage meetings, share notes across teams, brainstorm, and more. So we're really happy to have him on board. Both of them will share their expertise and show us in real time how to use it and how they collaborate together on notes. You'll also see on the back end Susan Hope Bard, our uh, Training and Education Manager. She'll be on hand to help answer your questions and help you with any technical issues. She'll be flagging your questions for Q&A throughout the webinar. Looking at our objectives for today, we hope that you will gain some OneNote and note-taking best practices, learn a couple of do's and don'ts, and we want you to be able to walk away having created a OneNote notebook section and page from scratch. So if you have OneNote already installed on your computer, I would recommend pop that baby open. Let's do it together in real time when Wes starts taking us through the live demo portion because the best way to actually learn it is to do it. So we want you to take the opportunity today to do this with us and spend a little bit of time learning how this tool can be leveraged to help you stay more organized and lose the post-its and not go searching for random missing emails with notes. We hope that it'll, it will help you uh, bring your notes more together and tighter and keep those brainstorming uh, sessions and creative sessions more at your fingertips when you need them. 
We hope that this webinar will help expand your comfort with navigating the different parts and uses of OneNote so that you can come away knowing, okay, this can do this, and maybe it can't do this thing that I thought it could, so that you have a little bit of a better idea of how to navigate around and what it can do for you. Before we jump into that full topic in just a couple of minutes, just a little bit about TechSoup if you're not already familiar with us. We are everywhere on this map that's blue, which is pretty much all around the world with a few handful of exceptions, uh, running events like this, running meetups in person where you can find us in cities around the world through our NetSquared meetups, and helping to be that bridge between uh, civil society and social change agents with the corporate sector and technology. So we want to make sure that you have the technology that you need to really accomplish your mission and to help you learn how to use it. So while I am talking about TechSoup, I would love for you to show us in the chat window where you are joining us from today. So go ahead and chat in from where you are joining. Today's uh, topic can help anybody I think using OneNote no matter where you are from, but some of the donation program information I will talk about later may be most applicable to those of you joining from the United States. If you are joining us from outside the United States, I would recommend visiting TechSoup.Global and clicking on your country to find your local program where you may be able to access donated products and trainings and other resources to help your organization meet its mission. We have been doing this work since 1987 and have helped facilitate technology products and grants to the tune of $5.4 billion with a B. And before joining TechSoup, I used our programs at TechSoup at three small nonprofits. So I'm actually a beneficiary and recipient of many of our programs. So I really appreciate the value of the work we do here. And I hope you do too. So now let's dive into OneNote. How much do you currently use OneNote? And this is just to give us an idea kind of what level of expertise you come in to this program with. We have about 330 people on the line right now, and that number is sure to continue climbing over the course of the hour. Is this your first time looking at it today? Maybe you've never opened it up, seen it there lingering in your office suite on your desktop, but you've never tried it. Maybe you've opened it up and saw that big blank white screen and then closed it right back up fearing not knowing what it does, not wanting to actually dive in. I understand that fear. Maybe you've used it a handful of times but want to use it better. For those of you who use it daily, feel free to chat in to let us know what you find it really works well for uh, because we can share those tips of yours back out with our audience as well and share some of your expertise. So I'm going to give just a couple more seconds so everyone can participate in this poll, and then I'll go ahead and share the results. It looks like the great majority of our audience is brand new. So you are in the right place since this is OneNote for Beginners. Uh, those of you who use it daily, we are happy to have you on and would invite you to share your expertise. We probably won't be covering many advanced topics today as this is really geared toward beginners. So, but as always, you are welcome to join us and stay with us for the full webinar. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and bring on our first presenter, our Senior Communications Director, Rosette. She's going to talk to us a bit. Before we share the live demo, Wes is going to take us through the live demo, but she's going to talk to us a bit about what it's for. Like, Let's clear up what we use this for, what we maybe don't want to use it for, and give some comparisons between a couple of popular products out there so you have an idea of how it might compare with something else you may already be using. It's certainly going to be a step up from a Post-it. <laughs> it's certainly going to be a step up from uh, jotting notes on paper that never get translated into anything digital and shareable. Uh, but what else is it good for? So Rosette, thanks for joining us on the program. We're really glad to have you. Thanks, Becky. Um, so. What I'm going to do is I am going to show you with you the basics through slides. And then Wes is going to give a demo and reinforce everything I talk about. So you'll hear some repeated information, which we always welcome because in training it's always good to repeat uh, to reinforce the information. So at the very, very basic level, you know, who should use OneNote? Um, if you take a lot of notes, uh, that really helps whether it's for personal use or for uh, professional use. And I saw in the chat that some folks use it for um, personal, but yet to use it for their professional use. So this is good to see that you can toggle, and you'll learn more about toggling between the two and how easy that is. If you want to write, store, and search notes easily, it is very good for that. 
If you are already on a Microsoft platform with Windows and Office, it's going to be beautiful integration for you. And if you want to share with notes with others, whether they are within your organization, with a peer organization, or even personally with your family members. Um, and if you want to take notes on multiple devices, it's also very helpful. Um, I find that through my many years of um, crazy email volume and managing meetings, if I'm in like six back-to-back -back meetings uh, daily, or if I have a lot of documents, I find OneNote really a blessing because it helps streamline my life um, all throughout my life and um, all the meetings throughout the day. So I, I personally think OneNote can be used for many, many different things. So one question we have received um, in the past about uh, on OneNote webinars is, what is the difference between OneNote and Evernote? Now, I know that there are a lot of other note-taking applications out there, but these are the two main uh, largest competitors. Um, <clears throat> because I want to spend a lot more time on the demo with Wes, I, I created the slide. There are a lot of bullets. This is for you to use as a reference. Um, I'm just going to give you a concluding message to you, which is it's not really an either-or situation here. Um, Evernote, its strength is really managing web clips. OneNote has the same feature. Uh, Wes is going to demo it, but Evernote does that really well. And it's more of a digital file cabinet. Uh, OneNote is more uh, for um, it, the user interface makes it look very much like a digital notebook, basically a notebook that you use in high, junior high school with tabs and color coding. It's very easy to use. Um, and if you had to use only one and you already are using Microsoft in the office, then I do recommend OneNote. Once again, I'm not going to go through the detailed bullets here and I will um, let you look at it as reference um, after this presentation. Okay, so let's see here. The next slide here, we have basic structure. So at a very high level, looking at this, um, there are three hierarchical levels here. We've got the notebook at the very left-hand side. We've got the section, which is the next level down in terms of organization. And then the final level here is what's called page. These are where the notes are taken on. And so there are pages within a section and sections within a notebook. And what you're looking at here is the client version. And what that means is that it's the software that you download on your device. Um, and I'm going to show you the web app version in a bit. Um, and if I failed to mention earlier, OneNote is available for downloading and for use on all devices for free. And um, Wes is going to talk about this a little bit more in detail. But you can also use it uh, in conjunction with OneDrive. OneDrive is a cloud storage offering of Microsoft. And it is free as well and they give you 15 gigabytes for free. So if you're just taking notes, um, like mainly um, typing up regular notes, 15 gigabytes is going to be a lot. You'll have plenty of space. Um, it only gets a little bit more credit if you're using a lot of images and high resolution uh, files. But back to the slide here, like I said, I'm going to show you the client version and the web app version. So this is the client version. This is my actual view here. On the left-hand side has my notebooks. These are real notebooks that I use. My, my notebook that says my notebook at the very top left, that one I use for things that I'm not going to share. So whether it's HR work-related stuff that's sensitive to just me, or whether it's some personal things I want to put down and jog, uh, jot down before I forget. And I have a lot more notebooks than what's shown here, so you can really handle a lot of volume here with OneNote. This next slide that you see here is more or less the same thing that I just mentioned, but I had put it in here. It is a Microsoft uh, diagram, Microsoft created diagram, and I put it in here once again for your reference if you look back at this deck after the webinar. I'm not going to go into much detail here, but it does talk a little bit 
about everything I just said, but um, in more detail. We looked at the client version. This here in front of you is the web app version. So some folks like to work on the web app version, and some folks like to work on their own software and their own desktop. Uh, but this does give you a view of what it looks like. Once again, I show you the three parts of the hierarchy. The notebook at the very top, umbrella organization. Next level down is the section. And next level down is page. When we get to Wes's part, he will talk about what is a sub page, which is one level down from the page. But more or less, it's very similar and has the same um, idea. But you can indent a sub page to help organize um, all the notes. So these next two slides are on um, first getting started. So we are going to show you how to open up OneNote to create a notebook, a section, and page to write notes in the page to be able to move the notes around. The benefits of having um, OneNote notes within a page. Uh, Wes will also show you how to share a notebook, a section, and a page uh, with your colleagues. And then uh, also how to sync your notebook with other colleagues um, or even your family members. Um, also on OneDrive too. We talked about OneDrive offering free um, 15 gigabyte cloud storage. And then on other devices, they're like smartphones, um, and we have a little poll on that. Going in and looking at the more advanced tips, because I do see that um, some of you are um, daily users already, uh, you might not know some of these advanced tips. Um, Wes is going to show you how to send to OneNote emails, attachments from Outlook. He's going to show you how you can add meeting detail from the Outlook invites, and that way it tracks down and gives you all the details of who's invited the meeting, who's attending the meetings, when it was. Uh, that's very helpful when you're going back and searching. And by the way, the search feature is absolutely robust with OneNote. <clears throat> you can embed Office files, Microsoft Office files within OneNote, and it, you know, it's very easy to open back up again. You can start a new text box anywhere. Once again, Wes is going to show you that. You can tag items within a page. And what that means is that um, basically you can put down, okay, is it an action item? Is it an idea? Is it a question? Um, and it's very, very helpful for just organizing all the clutter that's on your notes. You can also insert voice recording, record a meeting, a video recording, photo, spreadsheet, other images. You can create, view, and hide set pages, um, once again, to help you organize all the clutter on the notes. And then um, adding a time dimension I find super valuable. One of the uh, critiques of OneNote is that, oh, well, it doesn't have a time dimension is what people say, even if there's a date and time stamp. Um, because what we do at home at, in TechSoup is we have a certain date, dating convention where the year and the month and the day is displayed. And that really helps me find notes if I know when the meeting was. But I don't remember actually what the meeting was about or details about, so I can search on that. You can also see different page versions, and Wes is going to show you how to password protect a section or notebook. So with that, we're going to go to a, a really quick poll. We'd love to see um, which device or devices uh, do you or would you mainly use to access OneNote. So go ahead and put your responses in. Great. And while people are responding, we do have some folks talking in the back end asking what version we're using to show OneNote. And we have Office 2013 installed on our computers that we're using here at TechSoup. And we're also using the uh, OneNote app, which is the web app version uh, that we're using. And so some of the screenshots are reflective of that. A lot of what's going to be covered today though will be uh, generically applicable depending on where you're accessing it. It may look a little bit different or an, a, something on the header may be in a different location. But a lot of this is going to be applicable whether you're accessing it from Office 365 or the web app or installed. 
but there are some differences. And also depending on the year you are accessing it or whether you are whether you're accessing it on a Mac. Uh, we have people in the chat commenting that 2016 is very similar to 2013. But it will look a little bit different if you are viewing it on an iPhone versus a desktop computer with it installed or the app. So just keep that in mind when you are going through, uh, when, when you are looking at these that you may need to search a little bit depending on the version you are using it uh, in since it may not be the same as what we are using. So with that, why don't we go ahead and close this poll and show the results. It looks like most people have participated. And uh, it looks like the great majority are planning to use it on their PC or laptop computer. Uh, and we've got a handful of Mac users, which I will chat out a couple of links for those of you on Macs. Somebody asked, said they couldn't find it on their Mac, so you may need to actually install it separately. It is free, so you can do that. Um, and a sizable chunk on uh, tablets and Android phones in particular, so that's great to know. So Rosette, take us through kind of what it means from these different devices. Sure. So um, here I have a very high level um, features that differentiate among the devices that we talked about. So it looks like a really large majority use the PC. And um, it does work beautifully with Windows on the PC. If you have touch screen devices, you can write notes with your stylus or your finger. On the Mac um, and Chromebooks, you know, it's, it's definitely going to have fewer tabs, fewer features. Uh, but at least you do have one note on the Mac. Um, it wasn't available in the past. It's now available, and it's getting more and more robust. But I do uh, feel for those 30 Mac users um, on our call today because it is not as robust for the Apple products. Um, and we have quite a few Mac users within TechSoup, and they um, admittedly have um, few issues here and there. I'm on a PC myself. I have no issues, and I love it. And for tablets, if you do have a Microsoft Surface Pro 3, once again, it integrates super well with Microsoft products. Um, you can write notes with your stylus or finger, and you can handwrite an equation, and they have really cool things like this Ink to Math tool, which converts that to text, and then you can get the solution much quicker. Um, for iOS phones and Android phones, um, they are both allowing for easily scribbling on the go. You can toggle between personal and enterprise accounts, which I love because I can still use the same application, and, and I know exactly which one's my personal stuff and which one's my text enterprise account. Uh, with Android, there are more and more uh, super awesome widgets um, that allow for really cool things that you can do with a screen. Um, a touch screen device like an Android phone. Windows phone, it's obviously once again, it's a Windows product, works really well. What's not mentioned in here as much is um, they do have OneNote on Apple Watches and Android Smartware. Um, so I have not used it myself. It's a little bit clunky from what I've understood with my research, but I imagine that'll be getting better and better with time. So with that, I am going to um, pass it on to Wes, who will be doing the demo for you guys. The deck that you see here, slides 21 and beyond, um, are screenshots for you for reference for later on. Um, but it's going to be so great to actually hear Wes do the live demo. So with that, Wes, you're on. Thanks for that, Rosette. I'm actually interrupting before Wes joins just to reiterate that we won't be we sh we will not be showing the slides that we have in the slide deck right now. But those are for reference, and we're going to go ahead and have Wes share his desktop directly. And Wes, what version are you going to be sharing in it? Is it going to be OneNote Web App? Is that the correct version, or are you using OneNote 2013 installed? No, I'll be on the OneNote 2013 installed version. Cool. Thanks, Becky. So, all right. I hope everybody can see my desktop now. Um, so, yeah. Thanks everybody for coming today. I again, my name is Wes White. I'm a program manager here at TechSoup. 
Um, I'm really excited to show you guys this tool because it's something that I use every day and it's one of my favorite things to use. It really helps keep you organized. It obviously uh, saves paper and things like that as well. But I've tried a bunch of other note-taking apps and this one is really my favorite because of the layout and the design and because of the really cool things that you can do with it. So I'm really excited to show you. Uh, the first step really here would be for all of you to download OneNote if you haven't already. The best way to do that is just to go to www.onenote.com. Um, and here you'll see this free download button on the left-hand side of the screen. You'll click that and it will download automatically to your desktop. Uh, there is a web app version which is pretty robust and works really well. Like Rosette said, it's, it's laid out a little bit differently but still very easy to use. Um, and for the desktop version though, it, it can download onto pretty much any device. So I am using a PC right now, but I have a Mac at home and I use it on that as well. And it syncs up perfectly between the devices. I also have it on my phone. I have an, I have an Apple iPhone and I, I use it to take notes on the go since I use OneNote for both personal use and uh, you know, taking notes at TechSoup as well. It's really helpful to have it on all of my devices as, at the same time because then I can sync it up and um, be up to date no matter where I go. So I really like that feature of it. So once you have OneNote downloaded, um, I will show you a little bit of what OneNote looks like. So you've seen uh, Rosette showed you around a little bit before, but on the left hand side, just to um, get everybody on the same page, there are notebooks. And then on the top of the screen, you'll see sections or tabs. You may, see, you may hear me referring to them as either or because uh, they look a lot like tabs and sometimes I just call them that. Uh, on the right-hand side, you will see pages and a really easy way to add a page or to add a section, I'm sorry, is to go up here and just click Create New Section on that little plus symbol at the very top. To add a new page, you go over to the right-hand side and hit that plus symbol and it just creates a new page. So very simple, easy to understand. And what I love about this format is that OneNote is laid out direct, exactly like uh, you know, kind of one of those old school binders. So uh, you, know, you would open it up, have your notebook, and then you would flip to the specific tab for whatever note you're trying to take and then add in you know, pages. So for those of you who are really used to taking notes on pen and pad like I used to be as well, uh, this is a really easy transition and it's really easy to understand. So, um, I really like that about OneNote's layout specifically. Um, also, if you're on a tablet, there actually is a really cool tool where you can actually take notes directly uh, on the screen writing with, uh, writing with your pen or stylus and it will actually convert into text as well. So that's a really cool feature that makes it even more like writing uh, with a pen and pad. So to begin, let's create a new notebook since that's where we're going to be taking most of our notes. Right now I'm in a notebook that I created using my personal OneDrive account. If you look over here on the left-hand side of the screen, there are all of these other notebooks here that I could access as well. Now this one says cross-team projects. If you can't read it, you know, weekly meetings, events, uh, other research that I'm doing. Each of these are shared notebooks that we use here at TechSoup to um, collaborate on work or research that we're doing or take meeting notes together, that type of thing. And I'll get into that soon. But um, for, for right now I'm using my personal account and I'll show you kind of what that looks like. So when you go over here, to create a new notebook, you'll go to File on the left-hand side again. You'll see this screen right here. Go down to New right under Info. And this screen will pop up. So as you see here, like I mentioned before, it's my OneDrive personal account. Uh, if this pops up on your screen, you can see it. It's uh, my Gmail address. So you can see that you can create these kinds of uh, these notebooks and use OneNote on any device, even if you're not using, uh, you know, an Outlook uh, as your uh, email provider. So that's really handy. And again, it allows me to sync across all of my devices, uh, even if I'm not using Windows products in uh, in other cases, which I really enjoy. So you can just create your notebook name. This will pop up and say create notebook. I'm not going to do that right now because we already have one to work with. So going back to the tab that we're on right now, I have a few sections laid out, webinar agenda, meeting notes, fundraising, budgeting, event planning, etc. I 
thought about a few situations or scenarios that you might see in day-to-day uh, -day work in a nonprofit. We have certainly used a few of these ourselves here at TechSoup, and um, they're pretty basic functions that OneNote is really, really good for. So to begin, meeting notes is definitely one of the best things to use OneNote for. Um, what I did here is I typed the name of the, of the meeting notes at the very top. So whatever you type at the very top of your note is going to come up as the title that you see over here on the right-hand side uh, on your page. Right? So here you can see the title, TechSoup Team Notes is the title of this page. But I don't have any notes in the actual body of the note. I did that for a specific reason. The reason being that OneNote allows this really cool capability of, uh, of creating sub-pages, which not all note-taking devices allow. So over here, I have this specific dating convention, which Rosette mentioned before we use here at TechSoup. It helps keep everything super organized, especially when you have meetings day in and day out. You really need to keep those organized in, in, a, you know, in, a, good, in a good way. So what we do here is we have this, uh, we use the, the year first, the full year, and then the month, and then the day specifically. And that allows you to keep everything under a certain, um, a certain topic. So for example, I have TechSoup Team Notes here, but I could create a new page. And say I want to take uh, Webinar Notes. Now you'll see that this has become a new topic on my pages, and that's because these pages right here are just sub-pages that um, I have specific notes on. So here you can see that I have a few example notes laid out for each of these days. But we're going to take some notes under Meeting Notes. So here I've created this, this note, and I don't really want to put anything down here because I'm going to add something in for this specific day. So I'm going to go to Add Page again, and you'll see that it automatically brings it up um, in the same uh, line as the, as the title pages that we have, so these webinar notes, the TechSoup Team Notes. In order to make this a subpage, we're going to go over here to the right-hand side, put your cursor over the untitled page, right-click, and it will bring up this menu of options. Now you can do all kinds of things here, right? You can rename, delete, cut, copy, paste, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what we want to do is go down to Make Subpage. So that will just push that over a little bit and keep it in line under this topic. So now we know that this, these notes are related to the webinar notes. So then we're going to go up here and use our dating convention, which I just mentioned before. It is the ninth, and I'm going to write down a topic as well, um, notes for an example. Okay, now what I really like about OneNote is that it integrates with all of the other Office products. So if you haven't used OneNote before, this can be a really handy feature, especially if you're on, uh, if you're using, say, Outlook, for example. Um, so we have a, we are in a meeting right now. Uh, on, my, on my Outlook calendar. So I'm going to add in some meeting details for this so that I can take notes specific to that meeting. This is a really good way to look very professional and, uh, and efficient with uh, your other colleagues in your office since it will put in all of the meeting notes in a very official looking way. So I'll go up here to the ribbon. And this ribbon is going to be very important to us because it has a lot of cool features that I'll go over throughout the, throughout the webinar. Go up here to Home and then go to the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you can see that there are all of the features that you know and love if you use, say, uh, Microsoft Word. So bold, italic, you know, cross-through, bullets, etc. But what I'm looking for is going to be over here to the right. So on the far right-hand side of that ribbon, you'll see Meeting Details. And when you put your cursor over it, it says Insert Meeting Details. Now, um, if you're integrated with Outlook and using Outlook for your organization, then this is a really cool tool that you can use. If you click on it, you'll see it's loading for just a second. But when it's done with that, it will create a drop-down menu of all of the meetings that I have on my Outlook calendar today. So here you can see that I have the webinar right here, Microsoft OneNote for Beginners. I'm going to select that webinar uh, meeting, and voila. It pulls down into the, uh, the page that I just made. So here you can see, and I'll just drag that up. What's really nice about OneNote is, is that whatever note that you create on the page comes up in a little text box like this that you can adjust however you want. So I can pull this out like that. I can move it around. 
um, it makes it a really flexible tool. Uh, especially if you have a lot of notes, it can be really nice to pull out pieces of those notes and say put a box over here. You can put the cursor anywhere on the screen, which is kind of cool. And say I want to put the cursor over here and create a little box. I like to do this for all of my notes for action items. So if I do that, and then I go home, create bullets, then I can actually say, you know, Wes to give webinar. Is that to help on the first part? Um, and as you can see, this kind of moves down the other notes, and that's because those slightly overlap. So if you just move that to the side, you won't have that issue. I'm just going to pull this back up here where it belongs. Cool. So when you include the meeting details, um, a really nice thing about that is that you see all the participants that have signed up for that meeting or have accepted the meeting. And you can go down here, looking at whoever's in the room with you, you can say, I'm in attendance, and so is Becky. And so that puts in, you know, puts two checks beside, and it really allows you to um, easily show who actually attended the meeting and who uh, may not have. It also gives you a little section down here for notes. So we're just going to put some notes down here. And that brought up, uh, that brought the notes into the same format as that notes section right there. But you can put notes, like I said, anywhere on the screen, and they won't come up in that same format. Now, the really nice thing about OneNote is that uh, for each of these notebooks, you can make them collaborative. So here at TechSoup, and I'm sure at a lot of your organizations as well, we work on a lot of cross-team projects, a lot of projects that involve people from all over the organization. So if you're working on a project like that, you may want to collaborate on notes with people from other teams or people that are in the meeting but may be working remotely or something like that. So in that case, uh, OneNote offers a really robust uh, collaboration tool. So what you'll need to do to make your notebook shareable, the notebook doesn't automatically become collaborative until you invite other people to work on it with you. So I'm going to go over here to the left-hand side. This is my OneNote webinar notebook. I'm going to right-click on that, and it will bring up this menu of options again. So as you can see, you can move it around. It's not stuck in place. You can put it um, in any kind of order that you want. But you can also go down here and share this notebook. I'm going to click on that to show you an example. And that brings up uh, this window right here. Now you can invite people to collaborate with you on this notebook either via email, which, in, which would mean that you would type their email address in here and even you know, include a personal message if you want. Or you can get a sharing link and actually um, take this link and just send it to somebody or place it on say like a wiki page or something like that where people can go in and just edit it um, no matter what team they're on. For our intents and purposes, I invited Rosette, as you can see down here. This is her other email, uh, to collaborate on this, on this notebook with me. And you can set privacy settings on the right-hand side on this little drop-down window right here where it says can edit or can view. If you want to keep it just uh, private and keep somebody from actually writing things in the notes or changing them anyway, you can select the view option. For this, I did edit because I want Rosette to show us some really cool ways that OneNote can be used. So Rosette, if you can, please uh, type some notes on my OneNote page. Great. I hope everybody can see this. What's uh, really cool about this is that Rosette is not in TechSoup right now. She's miles and miles away and uh, working remotely. And as you can see right here, her notes come up in a highlighted blue section. It's nice because here you can see in a lengthy meeting with lots of notes or when you're collaborating on a project and you need to be uh, brainstorming ideas and things like that, you can see exactly who has been uh, adding notes to the document and who hasn't been contributing. And that's really helpful because then you can identify the person that you might need to reach out to for a specific item or um, you know, ask a question to for help or a clarification on a certain thing. And over here you can see exactly who it is, not just because Rosette named herself directly in the, in the notes, but if you hover your mouse over uh, the little icon that comes up beside it, this says Microsoft account. That's because Rosette is actually not signed into uh, her account as her. But if you have, um, say, an enterprise level account, or if I were to take notes on Rosette's screen, then you would be able to see my uh, you would be able to see my full name come up. 
which is really handy and, again, allows you to kind of identify who's been contributing and in what way. And uh, you know, that, that helps a lot, especially when you have a big project to collaborate on. So that's available on uh, any notebook that you share and uh, any page that you share as well. So then uh, another good feature of OneNote on the actual page, it's really helpful for when notes get really, really long and so you have uh, a big project that you're working on and, and you're using the same page for all of your notes. Well, um, something that you might want to uh, flag within those notes are key items or ideas or questions or things like that. What's great about that is that OneNote offers a really robust uh, tagging tool. So you may have seen this in other note-taking apps that you've used, and if not, it's, uh, it's a little bit more robust than others that I've seen. If you go up to the Home on the ribbon, you can go over to the middle part and click this bottom arrow to bring up more, and it shows you all the different options that you can use. So you have you can label things as to dos you can label, label them as important, or uh, highlight them to remember. You can, if you're doing work for something else, or you just see something on the go. Sometimes I have it on my phone, and I, I have an idea. Somebody mentions a movie that I should watch, or something like that. You can write that down, and again, it syncs, so you'll you'll have that whenever you need it. Uh, you can tag that as a movie to see or a book to read, that kind of thing. And that syncs up with OneNote searching capabilities. So you, you can actually search for these tags when you go back to your notes later on. For right now, I'm going to tag these action items. So I'm going to go back into this little text box here. I'm just going to highlight those. And then you see it gives me some options right here. right? But I'm actually going to go up to the Home tab where it's more robust and go over to the To Do tag, which is obviously one of the more uh, used Tag. So I'm just going to click on that. It gives you these little boxes. I'm going to click Done. I'm working on that right now. So a uh, really cool way to make your notes a little bit more organized. The next thing that you can do once you're done with all of your meeting notes, you want to share them out to the rest of your team so that you can make sure that everybody has access to them. So I'm going to go up here to the Home tab, and you can go over here right next to the Meeting Details section. You, can, you have a little button for Email Page. Now I'm, actually, I'm not going to do that because I specifically turned off my Outlook for, um, for this purpose. But again, if you are um, synced up with Outlook, you can email all of those notes out to whoever you want, and it will start off just creating a, an email with all of the attendees already, already populated in the email field. So I like to do that before, like right when I am leaving a meeting, and so people have access to the notes as soon as the meeting's over. Um, you can also share notes by going over here to the page that you want to share, right-clicking on it, and coming down here and saying Copy Link to Page. If I copy that link, I can come over and I'm just going to paste. And you'll see that the, meeting, the link to the meeting notes, that exact page, came up right there. So another really easy way to do that. Before we move on from the meeting notes section, I'm just going to go over a few other cool things that you can do uh, with, within meeting notes specifically. So come up to uh, the ribbon again, and this time we're going to go over to Insert. On the Insert tab, you can see that there's all kinds of things that you can put into these notes to help people out. So you can insert a file attachment, which is really helpful if you have some kind of document that people were supposed to read before a meeting. You can just plop that right down into, um, into the notes so that people can have access to them while they're in the meeting. You can insert Excel spreadsheets or Visio diagrams, and I'll go over that later if we have time. You can insert pictures. On the iPhone uh, app or, or Android app, you can actually take a picture with your phone and insert it directly into the notes from there. Really helpful if you're on the go and see something cool that you want to put down. Uh, you can also record audio and record video. So really helpful if you are at, a, at an event or at a lecture or something like that. You can actually set up an audio recording within the notes um, so that you have access to the exact words that somebody said later on. Um, so all these tools are really helpful for meeting notes specifically, but also any other kind of notes that you might need to take. Now, the second scenario that I'm going to go over <coughs> excuse me, is um, fundraising, something that we all have to do at one time or another. Fundraising often requires a little bit of online research. For this scenario, I'm just going to pretend that I know nothing about fundraising, and I, I'm really wondering, where do I even get started? So 
before we go into the research capabilities that OneNote has, a really, I want to tell you about a really interesting add-on that OneNote has. So if you go back to your browser, I'm going to go over to OneNote.com slash apps. You can see that up here in this field. Now when you go to this section, there are all kinds of really cool apps that integrate with OneNote that um, can be really helpful. I've used a few of them myself. A few that I want to point out specifically is uh, one is this one, email to OneNote. This allows you to actually um, send an email directly to OneNote and it will file it away for your use later on. Evernote to OneNote importer, very useful if that's the tool you've been using up until this point. And then down here at the very bottom, there's the OneNote web clipper. So you'll see this about midway through the page um, towards the very bottom. OneNote, to, OneNote Web Clipper is a really helpful um, app that you can download. It plugs into your browser. I'm actually using Chrome right now, and on the top right-hand side of my screen you can see this little icon. That's what it looks like. And it says Clip to OneNote. So once you install that, you'll be able to do some really interesting things, especially if you're working on something that involves online research. So, for that purpose right now, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use that tool. So I, I need to do some fundraising. I haven't fundraised a lot in the past. I, I don't really know where to start. I, I think I'm just going to go to TechSoup and see if they have any cool resources for me. So let me just go over to the TechSoup site. And then, oh, look at this. Really cool article on how to use A-B testing for fundraising. I don't know much about A-B testing. I don't really have time to read this whole article right now, but it looks really interesting. So I, I'll probably need to just save that for later, or maybe somebody else on my team, maybe somebody on my marketing team knows more about this, and, and they can, you know, this article will be more useful to them. So I'll go over here to that web clipper that I showed you before. I'm just going to click on that, and give it a few seconds to load. It will bring up a window that looks like this. Now you have a few options here. You can take a full page screenshot, which will just kind of save that, um, that article as an image in your OneNote page. You can take a region screenshot, so I can take just a picture of, say, anything on the page right here. I just, maybe I just want this section or, or just that picture, and it will clip that out for you. If you don't want to do that, you can also click article. I really like this function because it actually will take that entire article, the entire web page, and just pop it right down into OneNote in an editable way. So here you can check your location. OneNote webinar, fundraising, okay, yeah, that's the right section. But you can open that up and select any one that you want. So say I want it in my you know, event planning section, I could do that too. Um, and if there were yeah, and so that's, that's how you would do that. So with the, with the article pulled up, I'm going to clip it. See here that it's a clipping page, and the clip was successful. So if you click on View in OneNote, it will actually bring up the web app. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go back to the desktop client. And you'll see here under Fundraising section in my OneNote webinar notebook, I have the online research topic, and then right under that in a new page, I have Introduction to Using A-B Testing for Fundraising. That whole article has just popped right down into my OneNote to save for Rosette or anybody else who's sharing this notebook with me to look at whenever they need to. And what's nice about the article function is that now I can actually uh, do other things with this text in OneNote. So I can add my name. I can um, come down here and just Take out this whole section. I don't, I don't like that. I'm just going to delete that part. So, or I can highlight things as well. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, this place down here. And what's nice about OneNote is that it also has this draw function, which I was mentioning earlier. So for that, I'm just going to click on that. It will drop down a few things. And you have a highlighter up here. You can also draw on the text. You can circle things like this. Um, or you can go back up to the Draw tab and click the Highlighting section and highlight parts of the document. So not the prettiest highlighter I've ever done, but um, I'm sure you understand. 
If you go back up to the draw section, you can come over here to the left hand side and click type, and that'll get your cursor back so you can do um, what you were planning to do before. I'm going to make this a sub page, and voila, now we have some online research saved for later. Um, real quick, there are a few other things that are really helpful with OneNote to just go over. Um, if you're, say, doing budgeting and you need to insert an Excel spreadsheet, you can go up here to the Insert tab on the ribbon and go to Spreadsheet. You can click an existing Excel spreadsheet that may be uh, available on your desktop or create a new Excel spreadsheet. And right here, again, all of these are collaborative if you've shared this document out. I'm just going to hit Edit. And as you can see on my screen, it brings up a full Excel um, spreadsheet that you can work through collaboratively with other people and save into this OneNote uh, for later. Let me get out of that right now. Say I'm doing some event planning, and I'm not exactly sure um, where I want my venue to be or what I want the, the whole process for the event to be. I can go up to the, here to this event process page that I've already created, and I want to I want to really map out that process for everybody. So I'm going to hit click insert again. Go over here and insert a video diagram. So make that process really visual for everybody so that everybody understands exactly what we need to do. Click new video drawing, pops that down in there in the same way. So um, that's just a small slice of the capabilities that OneNote has. It can do a lot of other things. It's a really robust tool. And again, it's one of my favorite note-taking apps. I really I use it every day across all of my devices. I find it very, very helpful, and I hope you guys do too. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Becky now for Q&A. Um, hope you guys had a good time. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much for that, Wes. That was a lot of really good information about the functionality to cover in a pretty short amount of time. So I know we rushed through some of that, but don't worry. You're getting the recording later and the slides that have a lot of these things circled or, you know, for example, we have slides in here that show you which thing to click on under which tab circled throughout. So before I get into Q&A to answer some more of the questions, we are we are answering questions on the back end, and we'll continue to do that while I do this. But for those of you who are looking for OneNote and you are looking to upgrade potentially your latest version of Office Suite, and maybe you have it the installed version on your desktop and you're using 2007 or something like that and you'd like to upgrade to 2013 or 2016, these are the op options available to you through the TechSoup donation program. Now as Wes mentioned, you can go directly to the OneNote site and download it yourself as well. So they do offer it completely free, but if you want to have your full Office Suite updated so that you get those latest features, some of what Wes was showing, and you have the integration with uh, you know, your Outlook and your OneNote and your you know, Word and Excel kind of all together with the latest features, this is where you would do that. You can get Office Professional Plus, which includes OneNote along with uh, eight other Office products. Office Standard, which is the suite of six. So it's OneNote plus your Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, a couple of others. And then Office for Mac also includes OneNote. So if you have an earlier version of Office for Mac that doesn't include OneNote, this version does. So it was kind of an, a later add-on that Microsoft offered. And you can find all of these through TechSoup.org slash Microsoft, or you can go to this dedicated page, Microsoft dash software dash nonprofits for a little bit more detail about the program. Additionally, if you are looking to learn more about this and other Office Suite programs, we have a, a program with our partner Skillsoft where they have a whole package of Office 2013 or Office 2010 fundamentals with self-paced online learning courses where you can go in and watch videos and take courses on how to learn uh, more about OneNote, Excel, Office, uh, or Word, PowerPoint. All of the programs are in here. $20 admin fee gets you six months of unlimited access to these different videos uh, and trainings. So check those out if you are really looking to increase your, your skill area. And one last thing I'll mention is Microsoft Philanthropies overall. They are our, one of our they are our biggest donor partner, but they have a whole suite of products to help the modern nonprofit get more modern with their technology. And you can learn more about their, their donation programs through Microsoft.com uh, at their Philanthropies product donations page. Everything from free Office 365 
Dynamic CRM Online, Azure, and more. With that, I'm going to go ahead and get us into the questions, of which there are many. So we have a couple of questions, and I'm not sure uh, Wes or Rosette, which of you could respond about email. So they, there are a lot of people asking about the integration that you mentioned with Outlook. You had your Outlook closed so we didn't see it. But people are asking, can you use a different email uh, tool other than Outlook to have your integration, or does it really only work with Outlook? Anybody know that one? Yeah, I can answer it. I can answer this. So um, I have my headset on. Let me take it off so you can hear me more easily. I'm going to answer background questions um, the last uh, 15 minutes while Wes has been talking. So we've gotten a lot of questions about email addresses and if you can share your notes with someone who does not have OneNote. So you can use any email address you want to to share your notes with somebody outside. You don't, you don't need Outlook. Wes, for example, shared it with me through the Gmail account. I can have him share it with me to my Yahoo account. That's not a problem at all. You do not have to have OneNote installed to be able to use OneNote web app. So when Wes first shared with me um, this webinar OneNote notebook, he shared it with me. I opened it up, but I was able to do all that on the web app. So those are two questions I answered. I hope that was very clear. Great, but do you know if, if people can use other email hosts, like if they can use their Gmail to have that, that email integration or their Yahoo? Is that clear? Or maybe Wes is going to chime in here. Hey, Becky. Um, yeah, so the thing that I showed with uh, like send notes to email or, or, um, or get the meeting details from, you know, into your notes, that is specific, I believe, only to Outlook. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that is a specific feature that is on OneNote because of its integration with Outlook. So if you're using uh, you know, Google Calendar or something like that, it may not uh, be available to you. Okay, that's helpful to know. Uh, we have some folks asking questions about password protection and sort of how that can be applied. Um, so. Is that something that you can feel comfortable responding to around what parts can you can you lock a whole notebook to password protect it? Can you lock a section? Can you lock just one page of a notebook so people can't view it? Not only not edit it, but not view it. Do you know that answer? Wes is looking like he might be able to chime in here. Sure, Becky. So yeah, you can uh, password protect an entire notebook, and you can also password protect a section. Um, if you go to either one of those and put your cursor over them and then right click, you'll see that menu of options that I was going over before. Um, one of those options is um, password protect this, uh, this section. So that you can do for individual sections and I believe for notebooks as well, but Rosette can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Okay. Um, so we have a question about uh, documents when you share them. Do they have to be hosted on OneDrive or SharePoint to be edited by others? Or is there, uh, if somebody just installs the OneDrive app version, can, they, can you share and they can edit it from that without having it go into a OneDrive uh, file sharing <laughs> database online? I'm not sure how, uh, how I'm phrasing that well. but. Um, is that something that they can just share and use the OneDrive app without having to upload that document someplace first? We have some thoughtful looks here in the room, unsure of the answer on that. Rosette, do you happen to know? Some of these questions are stumpers today. Sure. So go ahead and repeat that question. Sorry, I was answering some uh, back sure. uh, some questions no problem. That. So just a question asking whether you need to upload a document to OneDrive or SharePoint in order for it to be shared and edited. Or can somebody share and edit it, edit it if they are only using the OneDrive – I'm sorry, the OneNote app. So if they have the web app, can you share it with somebody else and they can open it and edit it just in the app without uploading it someplace first? Yes, I believe so. This is in a document attachment on a note page on the OneNote web app, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. 
I did it earlier with Wes when we were preparing for this, so I was able to open up a, a PowerPoint Great. presentation. Okay. Well, that's helpful. So I know we've got more questions in the queue. We don't have more time though, unfortunately, in our hour. We did answer a lot of them on the back end, and we'll keep doing that while I wrap up uh, this webinar today. But I'd like to thank you all for joining us and point you to some additional resources. Like I mentioned, the training through Skillsoft, that can get you more in-depth on how to use these. There's an, uh, a 2013 and a 2010 version. Uh, we also have run a couple of other events on this in the past. So we have a webinar here, Microsoft OneNote for Nonprofits and Libraries. Uh, I pointed to uh, this article, What's New in PowerPoint and OneNote 2013. This highlights some of the features that were launched in 2013, especially if you're on 27, or sorry, 2007 or 2010. This might be something to look at because they've only expanded and gotten deeper since then, since uh, in the 2016 version as well. Uh, four ways to get more from the Microsoft Donation Program highlights some of the features of OneNote. Why your meetings suck and how to fix it was a pretty funny little article that was written, but it has some great tips on how to use OneNote to make your meetings more effective. Three OneNote tips to keep you organized. And then I pointed to a webinar we did last week that was not related to OneNote, but it was on PowerPoint for Beginners because this webinar today is part of a series that we're gearing uh, about the Microsoft Office Suite toward new users or users who just want to be using these tools better. So we have PowerPoint for Beginners, OneNote for Beginners, and then later this month we'll have Outlook Tips and Tricks. So we will tackle the inbox itself, uh, the inbox giant. And then I mentioned Microsoft Software Assurance Benefits here just because if you have a version of Office that you received through TechSoup, it came with Software Assurance, and that allows you to access free e-learning courses, hundreds of hours of e-learnings directly through the Volume Licensing Service Center. So I point to this article on Software Assurance benefits that can take you into where you can access those benefits. Somebody asked about the Home Use Program, and Software Assurance benefits allows you to extend the use of your Office Suite onto your home machine as well. So definitely check that out if you're looking for more. Go ahead and chat in one thing that you learned in today's webinar that you found really helpful or will try to implement. We'd also invite you to share this with your colleagues and friends who may find it useful as well. And we invite you to take that post-event survey. We would also invite you to come and join us for our upcoming webinars and events. I mentioned the one on Outlook Tips and Tricks on June 30th. But next week we have a series of three different webinars that you're welcome to join us for. Adobe Premiere, so that's the video editing tool through Adobe. We'll be looking at how to do that. We'll be talking about library privacy on Wednesday, and we'll be talking about children's literacy skills in the digital age on Thursday. So if you work with children in literacy, join us for those. Lastly, I'd like to thank our presenters for their great presentations today. We know we covered a lot in an hour, and we didn't get to every question, but I hope you found this valuable and useful and will join us for more. Thank you to Susan for helping on the back end, and ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor, for providing the use of their platform. If you're interested in doing the same, you can check out their donation program at TechSoup.org slash ReadyTalk. When we close out, please take a moment and complete this post-event survey that will pop up so we can continue to improve our webinar program. Thank you all so much, and have a terrific day. Bye-bye.